It's very common for you to uh, work with uh, team members both inside your firm and outside your firm who are using other programs to generate their uh, 3D models. And those models might be saved in file formats that Revit doesn't understand. Well, new in this release, Revit now supports the linking of Navisworks files. Now, this is uh, powerful because not only does it support native Navisworks files, NWD and NWC files, but any files contained within the Navisworks file in a variety of file formats that Navisworks understands will also display through in the linked Navisworks files. So to create um, a link to a Navisworks file, we create a coordination model. So we're going to go to the Insert tab here, and I'm going to click the Coordination Model button. This displays the coordination model dialog. This is a new dialog here in this release, and I'll click the add button here, select the model that I want to link, and it has to either be an NWD or an NWC file, and I'll open it up. I can now select the model name in the list here, and it will show me the full saved path as an absolute path, but if you like, you can change that to a relative path instead. Under positioning, I have two choices, origin, origin, or by shared coordinates. So if the uh, file that you're bringing in uh, understands the coordinate system of your Revit model, in other words, if they have common shared coordinates, then you can use those coordinates and it should come in in exactly the correct location. Uh, if you don't have shared coordinates saved between the two files, then it'll just default back to origin, origin anyway, and you might need to move and uh, relocate the file after it comes in. I'll go ahead and click OK here to finish uh, bringing in the coordination model. Now, at first, it's not really evident that anything has taken place. Well, the model that I brought in is some MEP ductwork and, um, you know, for the systems up here in this uh, project, and they're up in the roof area. So what I'm going to do is select this roof element and temporarily hide it to kind of get it out of the way. Now, you can kind of start to see the ductwork behind, but it's it's barely ghosted in here is this sort of whitish gray color. And um, if you highlight it, you'll see a box around it like you typically would see with any linked model. Now, um, if I select the coordination model, then it becomes a little bit more evident that this model contains uh, ductwork. But the reason it displays that way is because it's not actually using the Revit engine to draw that Navisworks model. It's actually using the native Navisworks engine to draw that model. So that, that sort of shaded view is the default behavior in Navisworks. So to provide a little bit more contrast in this view and understand what we're looking at a little bit better, what I'm going to do is just change my Revit view to a shaded view. And now that uh, ductwork will stand out much uh, more starkly against the dark gray background of all the architecture. So now I can start to see that I have a few coordination problems. Now, the first thing that I want to stress here is that this is for visual coordination only. So a coordination model in Revit terms means a visual coordination. Now, right away, we can tell that we have some trouble here with the ductwork going up a little bit too high um, and passing through the roof. So at this point, we really would have two options. We could get on the phone with our MEP engineer and explain the situation to them and ask them to move the ductwork down, in which case we would they would generate a new uh, version of the Navisworks file, and then we would go uh, back to coordination model, select it here, and we could reload that link. Um, we can also unload the link here, we can remove it all together, and we can use reload from to point to uh, a new location for that file if we change where it's located on our hard drive. Now, if that's not an option, let's say the engineer says that they are already at the minimum clearance and they just need more space there, then the other option, of course, that we can do as the architect is we can change um, the space that we allow for that. So I could move the roof, for example, which is what I'll do in this example here to just show you um, how this workflow might look. So even though I'm not drawing geometry and snapping it directly to that ductwork, I'm using the presence of that ductwork in its uh, correct geometric location to make better decisions about um, modifications that need to happen to the model. Another area that we might notice is that these ducts are passing through a solid wall here, and uh, we might want to more accurately represent that there's going to be penetrations in those locations. So I can go to uh, architecture and I can select this wall here, and I can click uh, wall opening. Um, then I just simply drag uh, out a box for the opening that I want to create. And then I'll select it and fine tune its size and position here a little bit. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of make a few uh, changes to that. 
and we can start to show that there's a penetration there for the ductwork to pass through. Now, of course, we could repeat that in the other locations. So again, I'm not able to snap that opening directly to the duct, but I can use the presence of that duct to tell me that I need an opening there. And it allows us to start having a conversation with our consultants and to be able to make these sort of visual coordinations and then make better design decisions uh, throughout the course of that conversation as we're working together.